my group. So I just wanted to show how I like take care of my skin and conceal my psoriasis. So um, I have it a lot on my elbow. It's not showing up for whatever reason on camera, but I have it a lot on my elbow. I have it some on my back. I have a lot on my knees and I mostly have it right now like here and on my forehead. You can see that. <laughs> It's all crusty right now and red, um, but the lighting's making it a little hard to see. But I'm still gonna show y'all what I do and what products I use. So first things first, I slept in my makeup last night, which I know was really bad, so it's not showing up as bad as it normally would show up. Hi, whoever just came in and then left. <laughs> um, you can see the crust a little bit. Like I said, you can see the crust and the redness. Um, it's just not showing up on here that well, but I'll still show y'all. So I slept in my makeup. Um, you're going to see it come off. I'm not going to take off my eye makeup because actually I have to be somewhere. Um, and I just don't want to have to take the time to reapply it. So um, this right here is a headband that I got from the dollar store. I'm going to put that on my head. And it just blocks. Oh, and I also have it really bad on my um, scalp. So this does a really good job of just pulling everything up. So you can see the, some of those flakes on my forehead. Um, which is actually a good sign because I'd rather have the flakes than the oozing. Um, and I'm really bloated because I'm past the day I'm supposed to start my period. No, I'm not pregnant, but when I'm like about to start, I'm so bloated and I just, yeah. So I'm going to put my hair up just to further get the hair out of my face. And so, okay, so I've tried rags before with scrubbing. I've tried facial scrubs. And I find that those are a little, they cause the inflammation of my psoriasis to just get worse. So I like to just use a basic cotton pad. And first what I do is I just put warm, not hot, but warm water on it. And I just rub in a circular motion, gently, gently, just to get it, you know, wet, just so that it has some moisture. And again, I'm not, I'm not gonna wash off the, um, my eye makeup because I have to be somewhere and I just don't wanna, it's just time consuming. My eyebrows are naturally uh, dark and shaped. I used to actually get teased for them as a kid because I was called triangle brows, but now I don't have to do anything to them. So I don't, it's not showing up well, but. So once I get it like wet, you can see some of the makeup coming off. Um, okay, so once I get it like wet, then I get the, this, where is it? Deep clean, it's like that micellar, however you say it, micellar, micellar, I don't know, cleansing water. And um, I like to shake it up. And I tend to get like everything on clearance, like most of my stuff's going to have like a clearance tag on it. But then I use some kind of pricier things that I buy off eBay. So I get that all oiled up. And this I find is so moisturizing on my psoriasis. It does not aggravate it at all. Um, so I really like this stuff. So I just, again, gently is keyword. Like the amount of pressure that you put on your psoriasis does make a difference. I also noticed that if I accidentally scratch my psoriasis, if I do it with my fake nails, which I don't go to the salon, I get those like $5 glue on nails. If I do it with those, it doesn't cause my psoriasis to get worse. But the second I scratch with my real nail, oh my lord, it is a nightmare. Okay. So, I'm gonna look in the mirror now, sorry. Woo! Yeah, so it is super crusty on my forehead. So at this point, when it's like this crusty, like you can see the crust coming off. Um, but it's, and it's also red, but um, that's just inevitable when you wash your face with psoriasis. It is inevitable that's gonna happen. So at this point, I just take my fingers and I just kind of try to rub in a circular motion all that dead flaky stuff off because you kind of have to think of it like when you take your car to get painted. You know, the buffing and then the priming and then the primer, I mean, and then the um, actual paint or concealer and then the um, sealant or whatever. So right now this part would be the buffering, but because it's psoriasis and not a car, 
you have to be a little more gentle. So let's see if y'all can see all that. Do you see that? That's actually a good sign because that means that um, it's going to be easier application. It, the fact that it's peeling off and not oozing because sometimes my psoriasis like straight up will ooze. Um, so you can see I'm scrubbing that off or rubbing it off rather in a circular motion. For those who just came in, I applied the micellar water or whatever that's called to remove makeup that I slept in. And I just, it's kind of a long process. It's frustrating when people think that I'm in the bathroom just primping when I'm actually spending like 90% of the time just scrubbing away dead skin, you know? When they're like, Rachel, you don't have to glam up. And I'm like, excuse me, I haven't even put makeup on. I'm freaking scrubbing off stuff so that people don't ask me 50 questions when I just go to, you know, Walmart. <laughs> so I'm, um, or they don't even ask questions. It's usually just disturbed looks at my forehead. I have this one, there's this one mom at my kid's school. Like, I swear, either she's completely, like, not self-aware at all. Or she does it on purpose, but when she talks to me, she, like, literally will just stare at my crusty forehead the entire time. Like, <laughs> like one time I was just like, yeah, I've got psoriasis all over my forehead. <laughs> I know it looks funny. And she still proceeded to stare at my forehead. I was like, okay. Um, I don't know. If she's trying to hurt my feelings. Sometimes I think, though, we are hyper paranoid. Like, I think we judge ourselves harsher than how other people do. But I know that in fifth grade, the bullying over my psoriasis was even from teachers. I had Miss Miller in fifth grade ask me in front of the other classmates. Look at this. Look at that. Do you see that? Miss Miller in fifth grade asked me in front of the other classmates if I was, quote unquote, turning into an alien <laughs> and I was like why I remember thinking like why would she ask me that and um it was because the psoriasis on my forehead that was like getting that was all over my scalp and stuff was just so thick you know and white it was nothing like it is now it was actually a lot worse back then um and I didn't know how to manage it I had no idea you know that was actually before God, what year would that what year would that have been? I don't know the 90s, but that was definitely before there was more treatment options for psoriasis. Back then I just did the tanning bed and jojoba oil and um that was it. So, and right now for anyone wondering, I my psoriasis, okay, so this is the week of my period, like when I start my period. And so that's when my psoriasis gets the worst, but Usually I can control it with diet when it's not that week, but this is that week. So I'm, in case you're wondering, peeling the skin off, if you just came in, and like I was saying earlier, it's really frustrating how I have to do this step before I leave anywhere. I mean, I guess I don't have to, but I feel better when I get the dead skin off because otherwise people stare. But the thing is, is that people think I'm primping the whole time in the bathroom. Um, when I'm not primping, I'm like treating my skin. There's this one patch I'm trying to peel off. Um, if you just came in though, I suggest watching from the beginning so you kind of get where I'm at. Okay. Oh, my skin is peeling. So I applied that salicylic, however you say it, acid yesterday from the Dermarest brand, which actually works really well. Oh, it's peeling like crazy. Okay. Like I'm peeling off strips, which is again, I've said again so much, which is a really good sign compared to oozing and placking up. So I think I'm going, well, I still have some spots that are peeling. And if I don't peel those off, then when I go to apply the concealer over it, it is going to just look gross. So I need to go ahead and don't, don't see what you're doing just your towards. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm having to look in the mirror. Um, but there is my forehead. You can see all the crust that I've peeled off. I applied this and earlier I put this micellar water to wipe off the makeup I slept in, but I'm keeping on my eye makeup because I have to be somewhere. And I, okay, so I peeled off most of this. 
So then I will tend to this part like last, like I will comb out these flakes. So just, yeah, I'm not afraid of y'all like judging me. So after that, I do one final, I take another cotton pad and I add a little more moisture back to where I did all that peeling and I just do a final kind of circular, soft keyword though, pressure is important, soft motion. I also have a patch right there, but it's nice and smooth. You're welcome, Michelle. And um, yeah, so, and I also, it's not really, woohoo, y'all are seeing some bad part of my skin up close, but. So there's a patch there. I have some patches there. I have freckles, that's what some of that is, but, and I have a patch there and my forehead. There, 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 there. So I'm gonna keep wiping. Um, so believe it or not, this is all for the most part smooth, although there are some inevitable spots that are gonna kind of, you know, they're gonna stay pretty crusty. Okay, one second, y'all. I'm gonna go back in the mirror real quick and just keep rubbing those parts on my scalp because I don't want to wear a hat today. I get I get sick of wearing hats. Like it can't be good to wear hats every day anyway. Um, and the thing is, I have these. I I I do my roots. My hair is actually naturally like a really dark blonde, and I but I I make my hair red. Um, because believe it or not. The, when I when my roots are red, it blends in really well with my red inflamed scalp. So I find that um, it just kind of like a lot of people say, don't do your hair red if you've got rosacea or you've got psoriasis because then it brings out the red in your skin. But I actually find the opposite. When I was blonde and brunette, um, it actually, the contrast between that and then my red skin, there was much more of a contrast. Whereas now there's less of a contrast, you know what I'm saying? So I don't always believe... Um, uh, what the makeup artists say, especially if they don't have, and hairstylists say, especially if they don't actually have a skin condition so they don't live every single day with a red face. Okay, so, up, uh, one more area on the left that I kind of avoided. So, I am rubbing, 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 rubbing. I'm sorry, y'all are having to look at my bloated torso. Almost done. I really, well, no, I'm glad I'm doing this part because otherwise it would have been pointless to even, because this is the most important part. And there's also a part right here that I'm scrubbing too, dead skin. And the lighting in here is terrible. I'm using my phone, so. All right, all right, so it is mostly smooth. Can't get it perfect, whatever. Now, then I just take cool water. What is this? I'm just showing um, how I, like cover up my psoriasis and I took off all the dead skin. I like scrubbed it with my fingers in a circular motion after at putting this micellar water on top of it. So I just kind of do one last like rub down just to get off all the dead skin. And I can still feel some flaking off. <laughs> I swear it is never ending. Um, sorry if this is boring, you don't, um, I hate telling people you don't have to watch. It sounds so, like, like, rude. You don't have to watch me if I'm boring. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Okay, done doing that. So now, this is the really important part. Like I said, it's kind of like if you go to get your car painted, you have to do the buffing, which I just did, and then you have to do the priming, okay? So that's, that's what I'm going to do right now. So this is kind of pricey, okay? But I don't get it for the price it is. This is a uh, Phoenix. This is the herbivore brand, and this is called Phoenix. This is what a lot of celebrities use to just keep their skin soft all day. It's an oil with like omega fatty acids and, um, gosh, uh, myrrh. And I'm having a mind blank, but there are tons of oils in here that you can't just find in your run, run of the mill oil blend. Um, all it takes is one drop. I get it off eBay though for a fraction of the price because I ain't paying $100 for this so I get it for like 40 something dollars. Um, so I just I put it like where, where it's really bad and red and I gently 
let it just soak in, which again, it's like priming a vehicle. This is like the primer part so that the palette is smooth enough to conceal. And dudes should not be afraid if they're con if they have it on their face and they're insecure, like they should not be afraid to apply product like concealer. Cause I mean, I don't know. Our freaking founding fathers used to, <laughs> used to wear wigs and makeup and tights, like and who cares? So um, it doesn't matter. So I rub that in everywhere, like even right under my eyes. And all up into my scalp. That's important for me, obviously, with all the flaking that I will take care of in a moment. So I let that kind of just sit for like, it says three minutes, but um, I'm not gonna do three whole minutes because I'm filming. So then I'm going to apply this right here. This I love and I don't actually know the price of this. Um, this was donated to me when I was in the shelter. This is Mara Maracuja and Yangu Soothing Oil, which I looked up online. The brand is Nayakio, N-Y-A-K-I-O. And I looked it up online and it says, lightly massage three drops onto face, concentrating on areas of redness and dryness. This is amazing. So I take about that much and I apply it again ah, to there and then I have that spot there that I really want to focus on. This smells really good too. It's not like um like fragrant but it just has like a very fresh smell. So then I'm all oiled up. Make sure you go into your neck too. I'm even going to take it into my ears because um, my ears are super, super peely and dry. And when I do that, this oil just instantly works like a primer, just smooths it out. So after I'm done with this oil, then I take the Ultra Repair Cream Intense Hydration by First Aid Beauty. And this actually wins in the Allure Magazine, whatever, like Beauty Award stuff. This actually wins because it's that moisturizing. I highly recommend. So I just do one dot like that and I take it again. And I know it may seem like I'm using a lot, but um, this is like seriously the only way that I can put stuff on my skin and it won't you know, start flaking and peeling and oozing and all that. <laughs> so, and when I rub, oop, yeah, I still see some peely spots on my forehead because, and the way I'm noticing them, and that's important that you get those spots off if you're a girl who's going to put on concealer because if you don't, um, whatever product you put on top of it is going, you're going to have those peely spots coming through drying up and crusting because that skin is ready to come off. So I'm just peeling those off. So anyway, so I do my fingers in a circular motion like this so that any dead skin that's still ready to come off will just slather off easier if I'm doing it in a circular motion. Okay. So now we're almost done priming the car, <laughs> ready to apply the paint, right? So, still circular, because my forehead is the absolute worst, so I just put a lot of emphasis on that. And I don't bother with my elbows this time of year because, um... Like, I'm not even going to go outside without a coat because I live in Minnesota, right? And it's just pointless. Which, that's kind of why I like winter. <laughs> so, then I take the, um, this is called Sun Plus Skincare Refresh and Hydrate 100% Vegan 
After Sun Body Spray. This was from Target, but I got it on clearance like I get most of my products. But I read the ingredients and it has radish root, which is absolutely amazing for healing inflamed skin. And it has aloe. It has no fragrance. Salicylic acid. Witch hazel, which calms my skin. Some people say the opposite. Cucumber and lavender. And because it heals sunburns, this works wonders as a primer that I like to put on before I put on my um, concealer. So I'm getting up close so y'all can see. And look at all those flakes I rubbed off. Isn't that just super sexy? <laughs> so I shake this up. And then I, um, like this far, just close my eyes and... There. Then this is like the fun part to me because this is where the magic happens. So this is Boiling by Benefit. This is the travel size because the regular size is crazy price wise. Um, this is concealer and it's called Industrial Strength Concealer Boiling. I've tried every product you could imagine for concealing. This is awesome. I'm so excited you're doing this. I have a spot some say, oh my gosh, Willow. I like your name, Willow Grace North. That sounds like a beautiful, I don't even know, like Willow Grace North. Willow Grace North. It just sounds, it just sounds elegant. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I take my handy dandy notebook, and no, I'm just kidding, take my handy dandy sponge, and most people, normal people, people who don't have psoriasis all over their skin, they don't. They can wet this. They can make it, <laughs> you're welcome. They can make it, they can apply, they can put water on it and then apply their makeup and like it, you know, helps it disperse more evenly and whatever. But we have problem skin. So we cannot put water on this because then what that does is that soaks up all the moisture that we put on top when we primed our car and got it ready to be painted, okay? You love the concealer. I love it too. And I've tried every single kind. I've tried the Tarte Shape Tape, which is like renowned. Like, I mean, this is the best, okay? And then I'd have to say the second best is that Revolution brand that you can only order really online. Um, whoo, look at that, you guys. Just in time for Halloween. So, I get a good amount in here. And I let this kind of soak into my skin for a good minute because otherwise, you know, if you like have any spots that are still oozing like sebum or you know how our skin gets when you scratch it or whatever even if it's not necessarily bleeding it's like releasing certain oils that are gonna dry up yeah so um <laughs> so I get a good smackaroo in here and again pressure is important when you're applying it on top of your psoriasis because if you do it too hard you're going to soak up all the oil that you put on your face and then it's going to dry up faster and if you do it too soft it's gonna look cakey and just no so I know it's just concealer but I put it everywhere because I have psoriasis and this actually doesn't give me a cakey look so first I put it I just always start here for some reason and I go like that you can see how um, concentrated it is. Like it actually, I feel like a geisha girl. <laughs> so make sure you like go up to your nostrils and everything because you don't, <laughs> look at my mouth, I have no mouth anymore. <laughs> So, like I was saying, dudes can totally do this, too, because, like, it's not weird, honestly, for men to apply concealer. I don't see anything weird about that. I bring it out to my ears, too. Down my neck. Blend, 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 bitty blend. And now we're going to do this side. Which, I mean, I like my freckles, but... I mean, just look at the difference. Like, hi, you guys. Hi, you guys. Okay, so. And I do press a little hard um, this part of my face where my pores are larger because I don't, because I want to make sure it, like, goes in and isn't just sitting atop because then that looks kind of icky. So, um, 
wow, this <laughs> on camera, it really shows how it conceals. It's pretty cool. And if you want to see all the products I used before applying this, because it will not go on smoothly like this if I do not do the aforementioned, or if I don't do what I did um, preceding this step. Like, make sure you blend it out into your neck also. But yeah, if I don't apply the products I did before, which I used to try, uh-oh, I used to try, and um, it was just a wreck. Now, this is, wait. I had it super bad on my face a few years back and I didn't know of this concealer yet. I was using MAC Pro Longwear. It's still full coverage, but not as thick and heavy as the Boyoing. Would definitely, oh, I can't click see more yet because I'm still streaming, but I'll click more on your comment. I agree though, I have MAC Pro Long and you're right, it's not as it's not as thick and heavy. And in my opinion, it's more drying. Like with psoriasis, you kind of have to like reach for the old lady stuff no offense to old ladies, well, I'm kind of old, you can, but you can't, you can't be getting like the acne stuff unless it's like salicylic acid because it's just going to dry it out. It's just not going to work. That's girl. Oh, thank you. Does it contain steroid? No, I don't. I, I, steroids helped me for a little bit, but I completely stopped last year because I felt like the comeback, you know, was just too much. Like I, I'd rather just control it with diet and stuff, but respect. I mean, I respect whatever route people want to take to control their psoriasis if it makes them happy. So now, um, there's that. Look at my forehead. <laughs> I mean, look at that. So this part, I do slightly lighter pressure on these spots because you don't want to press too hard or you are going to absorb all that moisture and then it will kind of defeat the purpose of all the products that you applied first to prime your car. <laughs> so you see, it's a little harder for me to conceal up here. Just a wee bit harder. Because it's hot. Like, this part compared to this part is red. Oh, well, they're both red. But this one's, like, hotter and oilier and slicker. And just has more, it just has different textures in it compared to on the lower part of my face because this is more inflamed. So this is harder to apply because mm -hmm. of that temperature difference. I'm guessing that's why. I'm not really sure. So I bring it all the way up into my scalp. Polator shampoo, diet. Well, I avoid nightshade vegetables. Um, the only meat I will eat on occasion is like <clears throat> salmon. And I avoid most sugars. The only sugars I really eat are from berries and stevia. And those cause me no problem. Like my psoriasis is normally not even this bad. Um, it's just, it's that, you know, week of my period, which it's always this bad week of my period. Because my hormones, I get testosterone dominant around this time of the month. Um, which is why I'll even get some chin hairs. Yeah, true story. All right, so, um, there's still, I'm going to look in the mirror. Yeah, there's still some spots I feel could use a little more concealer up here. It's showing it more in real life. You can see there's that one spot right there that is still hot and inflamed. That's why normally I'll wait about 20 minutes after applying all my moisturizers to apply concealer because there's I want all the ooze and stuff <laughs> to happen so that it can dry up. So then it's easier to apply rather than the ooze seeping through. Now, then you just kind of want to do a double check and you want to make sure that... Um, it's blended out everywhere into your ears, down your neck, into your ears, um, under your brow bone, under your nose, and into your hairline. Okay? That's how good this concealer is. It's crazy. And I'm not sponsored by anything or anything. I've never been. So, um, yeah. So then, this is just like vanity part really this has nothing to do with the psoriasis necessarily but just so I don't look completely dead I take a bronzer this is the cargo brand from Kohl's and this is 
in two, 25, oops, my battery is low, it says, uh-oh. And I um, just kind of, just so I don't look so dead, I just rub that right under my eyes. And that's it. And then um, maybe apply some right there so that kind of chisels my nose so I don't just look so pale, you know. Whatever, it didn't really make a difference. So then, um, again, so I don't just look so pale, um, I'm gonna take this peach cargo blush. <laughs> and I noticed, um, like I was saying with the red hair, how there's this like misconception that if you have like red hair, it's gonna bring out your rosacea or your um, psoriasis. I find the opposite. I find that it actually all kind of looks more like less red when you have more red on your face. Like, I mean, when you have more red, like, in your makeup or your hair. There. Um, it looks a little dramatic right now, but it's going to be blended out. So then, too, this part is actually psoriasis related. Um, this is by NYX. This is the in Auburn. Oh, thank you, Crystal. No, I don't eat pork, Marcus. I actually, <laughs> my mom is a, a non-practicing Jew, and my dad's side is Baptist Christian, but my mom didn't give us pork or beef growing up because like the Torah said not to or whatever. So I just didn't grow up eating pork. <sighs> so I just heat this up because otherwise I find it's a little hard. Um, I'm just going to add a little, which I don't really like to because then I feel like I'm going to make my lashes fall. I mean, my uh, brows fall out. That part's not really important. I don't know why I just showed that. This brush part's the important part because I have flakes in my brows. So I like to brush out the flakes. Hello, welcome to everybody who just popped in. I really suggest re-watching this when, I, when it's done so you can see what I did first. So I brush out all the, the gross, <laughs> which is showing up um, in my mirror, but you can still see that one spot that just won't conceal because it's too hot, too red, and too oozy. But, you know, it is what it is. If someone wants to stare at that, then... I'll, I'll take a picture for them so they can stare longer. So then I take my Laura Mercier powder, which is actually my favorite. And you would think because it's so high end that it would be like super expensive because it's like the best. Like honestly, other powders I won't touch. I'd rather wear no powder, but powder is super important. Okay, like even our founding fathers who wore makeup apply powder on top of their makeup because it's, a, it's just, well, I don't know. When you get a car painted, they don't put powder on it. So actually it's a bad... Um, comparison, but they do have a drying process. This is part of the drying process. This locks it in. Um, it's just very important. So, do you go, oh yeah, I've got to be gluten-free. The thing about gluten-free, like a lot of people get offended, like they think it's an annoying trend, and sometimes it is annoying, like if people only go gluten-free because it's a trend, but there's like major legitimacy to it because we actually have these little feelers in the bottom of our stomach that um, is kind of works like a filter, if you will. And um, what gluten does is uh, it gluten binds to a lot of the nutrients in the foods we eat, and then it sticks to those feelers in our stomachs. And our and the nutritional value of what we're eating is so depleted when we eat it with gluten. So I mean, honestly, being gluten free would benefit everybody. Um, with oats as an exception, like people, there's a lot of controversy with oats, but it's been proven in science, like, um, and it, like, it doesn't do anything to us when we eat oats, like, that's bad. So, like, yeah, anyway, I eat oats, and it, and it, when I went on an elimination diet and didn't eat oats, there was no difference. So, uh, so I, I get a good amount of the powder, and I just lock it in, and it's also going to make the blush that I put on look a lot softer. More. <laughs> now this step can be a little problematic if you don't have a proper brush. This brush is Face Secrets from Walmart and it's really important that you get like a soft velvety one like this because if you don't then it's gonna like stab your face. Now the forehead, I, my forehead actually still feels red and inflamed and hot and not not good. My forehead does not feel good right now. So I very, very gently, because if I don't do it gently, 
it absorbs too much of the moisture and it absorbs some of the concealer and then I have these like red spots that show through again. So that's it, that's how I do it. I've noticed um, motion, like application, method of application matters just as much as product and priming because if I were to take this and do like a lot of the makeup gurus and rub it in, it would defeat the purpose of everything I just did to conceal. You know what I'm saying? Again, imagine doing that to a car after you get your car painted and rubbing the, the paint. It would just, what's the point? So you have to you have to do everything a little differently when you have psoriasis. So then just so I, you know, look like I have lips because I put concealer over on my lips back accident, I'm just going to uh, go in and uh, line my lips. And then I'm just going to Is that even? Mm -mm. Okay. This part doesn't matter. <laughs> I just uh I just it just didn't feel complete having no lips. So um, then again, this may seem excessive, but this I find is best for keeping the psoriasis, especially on my forehead, from after applying the powder. It keeps it from peeling and drying up throughout the day and just getting disgusting through my powder. Again, I take the after sun stuff that you can see in the beginning of the video. Um, I shake it up and I just give it a, another spray. And it's all natural and vegan. So now I'm just going to show you what I do to get this, um, the pieces out of my scalp area. Wow, I'll take half hour to make. <laughs> um, that was, see, but that's, that's just, that's the point I was saying earlier. It's frustrating that people think that it took that long to do makeup. It actually took like 10 minutes for the actual like blush and all the other stuff. The scrubbing of my skin and the priming of my skin and the putting concealer over the psoriasis that's what was the, you know, 30 minute duration. And so there's a just, it's frustrating that people think that that's what I'm spending all my time doing is um, putting makeup on because it's not. So all those flakes in my forehead, what I do is, hold on. <laughs> You're welcome, Jennifer. Um, look at that. And I need to do my roots too. It's just not a good look. So, um, uh-oh, where's my comb? I'm going to show y'all what I do. Where's my comb? Oh, no. Well, normally, this makes no sense. As you can see, I didn't really prepare for this video. I, I don't like using this metal one, but it is what it is. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Um, so I... It keeps telling me to invite y'all on. That's so weird. Come on, Crystal. So then I, I just brush these out, as you see. Which they don't, you know, they're not all going to come out. It's just not going to happen. Because almost every single time I comb, there are new pieces that are going to fall out. Um, so I try to very gently touch my scalp, if at all. Because, you know, obviously, that's going to scrape off new pieces. This is why some like most days I just wear a hat because it's just too time consuming, really. And in the summer, I'll wear a baseball cap. There's that one flake I'm just getting. There we go. So then, um, I'm going to come into bed. I'm using baby oil and Vaseline. Ooh, the only bad thing about that is that um, Baby oil and Vaseline both contain mineral oil, which actually causes your skin to break down and lose moisture throughout the day, and it's actually proven to be toxic. And I'm not like one of these, like, cuckoo heads that's like, oh my god, it's, like, not vegan and blah blah blah. Like, I mean, I I'm, I'm mostly vegan, so I shouldn't really say that, but, um, you get what I'm saying. Like, not, my products are not all natural, so I'm not one of those people. It's just that baby oil and Vaseline actually, in the end, are gonna make it worse. This is just my PMS week. I'm actually going to part my hair this way since I just rubbed the makeup off of some of my scalp. But something I do... Oop! 
hold on. Yeah, I'm going to have to put, um, so another concealer that I recommend is the Tarte Maracuja that I have up here. So I'm just going to, so I don't go, have to go back downstairs. I'm just going to put that on real quick. I'm going to prop y'all up on a, on my desk. Uh oh, it's going to fall. This is an attic I'm in, by the way. So I'm just going to take a dab of that maracuja because I just rubbed some off downstairs. You can't really see it. Yeah, you can. Right there in the top corner, you can see where I rubbed it off. So I'm just going to dab it with my finger on top. I'm actually going to part my hair in a way that will go over that so that... Um, most of it will be covered anyway. And I just put some over that spot that kept oozing as well. Now, just so that I'm just brushing, I mean, I'm just rubbing out a lot of the flakes. Just so my scalp looks less, oof. You know, I'm always going to have some flakes. It's just, it is what it is. Um, I actually take, where's my brush? I'm not organized, if you couldn't tell. I highly like lack organ. Coconut oil, I think, is great for rubbing it into your scalp, um, like post-shower, because it's, okay, here's the thing. Coconut oil is a, works as a, I know y'all have heard of pulling, like, a lot of models, professional models like Giselle, every morning for, like, 10 minutes, they put coconut oil in their mouth and swoosh it around, and then they spit it, and it works as pulling. It pulls bacteria, so even though it's an oil, it does not actually absorb, like, uh, macadamia oil, for instance. The coconut oil does the opposite. That's why, like, if people have put hair dye on, which, oof, I haven't brushed my hair, so. If people put hair dye on and they don't like the color, if they sleep with coconut oil overnight, it will actually pull the color, and it works better um, than some color removers. Um, so when you put coconut oil on, you just have to be conscious of the fact that it's actually not going to work as a moisturizer in the long run. It will for a little bit, but it's mostly going to be pulling bacteria stuff, which is great if you're trying, if you, if you, if some of your psoriasis is like fungal related, which mine tends to be because like the leaky gut, candida, all that. But for moisture, I highly recommend jojoba or um, macadamia or avocado oil. Those actually will penetrate deeply. Um, so anyway, so what I do is I take this brush and then I take this from Walmart. This is the Profusion um, Amber Eyes, but I'm not putting on makeup. I take the, you can tell I use it a lot. I'm going to take, I take the brush and I rub it in the red and the orange eyeshadow and the red and the orange again. And then I just kind of put it. In my oh, okay. Sorry. I just said, it just said it disconnected. Um, and I just kind of, I've noticed it just kind of sweeps away the flakes. And I like that. I know it probably makes me seem so fake, but um, I just really like that. It just helps with everything. So I'm just going to dip it in again and continue it around. If you've got blonde hair, you can do this with beige. Um, I've done this with beige when I was blonde. If you've got black hair, you can easily do it with black. And I find this almost works better than using a comb to get out the flakes. You can see the flakes falling as I do that. I'm just, I don't see the point in doing my roots when I'm not going to be exposing my scalp that much in the winter anyway. So, that was a tiger behind me. That's my kitty, Mr. Kiggles. Mr. Kiggles, someone mentioned you. Okay. <laughs> But that is how I conceal. I hope that that helped. I hope that answered some questions. And um, let me know if you if you have any questions, and I'll try to answer in the comments. But thanks for all the um, the nice. Oops. See, I still have some flakes in my in my brows. There's just always gonna still be extra flaws when you do makeup and you have psoriasis. It's just gonna happen. I'm gonna take this. I'm going to 
brush them out because you can still see flakes from when I was brushing my hair. And I do have, it's not really showing up that bad on there, but. All right, bye.